shocking reasons the world's tallest skyscrapers failed. Visually stunning skyscrapers continue to be built around the world, many in the Far East and Middle East. That's just the direction many countries are going in. Building taller and taller is the trend, and it doesn't seem to be stopping anytime soon. You generally only hear about projects that are completed. You rarely hear about skyscrapers that fail and are never completed due to a number of reasons. These reasons can range from going over budget to encountering miscellaneous problems along the way. Whatever the case may be, the finished products never see the light of day. Here are some of the most high-profile failed skyscraper projects. 4. Dubai Creek Tower, United Arab Emirates For every outlandish Dubai construction, there are scores of unfinished, unfunded triumphs of architectural ambition long forgotten in the clamor for bigger, glitzier buildings. Dubai Creek Tower, unfortunately, is now counted among the failed projects of the desert city. The name may be provisional, like Burj Khalifa, which had been named Burj Dubai before opening. When this tower was first unveiled in February 2016, it had no name. The developer called it the Tower at Dubai Creek Harbor, or Iconic Tower. The name The Tower at Dubai Creek Harbor was also displayed on a foundation stone at the construction site. Since mid-2017, they have been using the new name Dubai Creek Tower, as it is planned to be the centerpiece of Dubai Creek Harbor. A giant model of the tower displayed in Dubai Mall is labeled with this new name. But here is a short backstory. A large project named Dubai Creek Harbor is being developed there, and lots of new buildings will be built. Dubai Creek Harbor is planned to be a new district in Dubai, just like Dubai Marina, Business Bay, and Downtown Dubai. However, this district will be three times the size of Downtown Dubai, covering an area of six square kilometers. Dubai Creek Tower was to be the centerpiece of this project. After Dubai Creek Tower was unveiled in February 2016, the son of the architect Santiago Calatrava said in an interview that the tower would be a notch taller than Burj Khalifa. Several months later, in June 2016, the chairman of Imar Properties said that the tower would be 100 meters taller than Burj Khalifa, which meant it would have been 928 meters tall. Since then, many news sites have started using the figure 928 to introduce the height of the proposed building. The foundations for the tower, which will be located in the center of the Dubai Creek Harbor development, were completed in 2017, but little progress has been made in recent years. In an update in August 2023, the developers revealed that the tower was being redesigned by an unnamed international company that was selected after a tender process. But why did such a massive project fail to meet its deadline? Dubai Creek Tower was expected to cost an astounding $1 billion, but for a project with such a high price tag, it was set to deliver little in terms of usable space. Despite its immense height, the structure would have just 20 floors and house observation decks, restaurants, and a hotel, which is probably why they decided to redesign it. However, the floor area wasn't in the brief for Dubai Creek Tower, and the scheme actually had two much more significant objectives to achieve. The first was to create another jaw-dropping tourist attraction for the city, and the second was to keep the title of world's tallest structure firmly in Dubai. Unfortunately, in 2018, work stopped at the construction site when its foundations had just been completed. Though no construction has taken place since late 2018, the tower was only formally put on hold in 2020 as Dubai went into lockdown. Recent years have also seen Dubai's property market waver. The ongoing fallout from the 2008 global financial crisis and the drop in the price of oil has left the city with an oversupply of homes and offices. The added impact of the pandemic and the subsequent global economic downturn may ultimately prove too much for the tower to proceed. The developers haven't given enough as to when the project will be completed. 3. Grant USA Tower, United States the Grant USA Tower was a proposed 121-story skyscraper planned for Newark, New Jersey, by developer Harry Grant. Harry Grant was an Iraqi-born developer based in New Jersey who financed the Gold Dome on top of Newark City Hall. 
The tower was to be located over the old Central Railroad of New Jersey's Newark and New York Railroad Terminal, near Broad and Lafayette Street. In 2007, the incomplete Renaissance Mall was torn down to build the Prudential Center. The old and unused part of the train station below, which was to serve as the tower's foundation, remains in place. There are currently plans to connect the old portion of the train station with the Prudential Center, with the idea of turning it into a museum. Had it been completed as planned by 1986, it would have contained the tallest hotel and would have been the tallest building and the tallest structure at the time. Their proposed 1,750-foot, 121-story tower was to be clad in dollar green glass, topped by a golden American bald eagle statue atop a flagpole and large gold letters spelling out USA at the peak. The tower was to contain over 3 million square feet of office space, a hotel, convention facilities, and a promenade with an ice skating rink. There were plans for a 21-floor atrium above the 121st floor, which would have been the top floor of the hotel component. Grant also proposed a privately financed 125-seat monorail system that would have run from the tower to the Newark Liberty International Airport. Construction on the first component of the project, the five-story, 250,000-square-foot Renaissance Mall, was underway in 1989. The mall was to feature an international food court, a floating piano bar, office space, and horse and buggy rides around downtown Newark. An accompanying 30-story tower called Grant USA One was to be connected to the mall via Skyway. In 1989, the developer overstepped the scope of his project and lost the mayor's support by tearing up the city's existing concrete sidewalks and replacing them with Belgian bricks. When Grant's construction team ignored the city engineer's cease and desist order, city officials had to physically go out there and put their arms around his workmen and stop them. After filing criminal charges against Grant, the town's mayor further framed him as an invasive, powerful outsider. Making matters worse, initial suspicions about Harry Grant's grandiose plans proved more than justified. Three years after his mega-projects were announced, it was clear Grant lacked the capacity to realize them, as the tower had not progressed beyond the architect's drawings. The only actual construction Grant ever started was on the Renaissance Mall. After purchasing the abandoned Central Railroad Depot, he went bankrupt halfway through the construction of the shopping mall, a white elephant that would blight downtown until 2005, when it was demolished to make way for the Prudential Center. 2. Grollo Tower, Australia It's unbelievable to think that Grollo Tower, which was to be located in Melbourne's Docklands, never came to be. The dream of Bruno Grollo, son of an Italian migrant who settled in Australia in 1928, was remarkably close to being realized, only to be stymied at the last moment. Over their stretch, the Grollos have changed city skylines and revolutionized Australia's construction industry through innovative practices, project success, and fair treatment of workers. Yet Grollo Tower at 560 meters was the one that got away. Seldom seen in a suit and with the recognizable bushy eyebrows and mustache, Bruno Grollo was a man who knew how to get it done. He exerted passion and enthusiasm when speaking in public about any one of his projects, an enthusiasm that filtered down through the company. Grollo Tower would have contained up to 11 subground levels catering for car parking, retail, and supermarket facilities, plus a 500-seat auditorium and ballroom. A six-month program placing 30-meter deep piles would have been required to support the tower's immense weight and the hole catering for the car park would have been the largest excavated in Melbourne. The soft clays, sands, and Cood Island silt that dominate Dockland's subterranean conditions would have had to have been displaced before reaching bedrock. A mix of uses within the tower followed, consisting of 30 levels of commercial space, roughly 450 residential apartments, and a hotel of 20 levels. A double-level foyer would have segregated Grollo Tower's commercial and living spaces, which would have seen a grand lobby approximately 40 levels high, catering for both residential and hotel guests, where, upon checked in, hotel guests would have taken to the elevators once more, only to be greeted with an open full hotel-length atrium when decamping the elevator. So where did Grollo Tower falter? 
The scheme first stumbled in April 1999, when, after negotiations with relevant bodies, the developer failed to pay $30 million to the Docklands Authority. Parallel to this was community concern about the massive shadow the tower would cast. Reportedly, shadows cast in the morning and evening would be cast an astounding 10 kilometers from the tower itself. Coming back for another bite of the apple, the developer tried once more to deliver the tower after expressions of interest for the Batman's Hill parcel were reopened in 2000. Although Grollo Tower held deposits from 200 potential apartment buyers after the registration of the interest campaign, the scheme was officially ruled out of contention for the parcel of Batman's Hill by the Docklands Authority in April 2001. Chief concerns reported through the media were funding issues and the fact that Grollo Tower would have covered the entire Batman's Hill precinct, which is seen as a less favorable outcome to separating the precinct into smaller development lots. 1. Jeddah Tower, Saudi Arabia In recent years, the city of Jeddah and Saudi Arabia has been a hotspot for ambitious development projects. However, one particular project, the Jeddah Tower, also known as the Kingdom Tower, has gained notoriety for its inability to be completed. This mega project, which was once planned to be the tallest building in the world, has faced numerous setbacks and delays, ultimately leading to its failure. The Jeddah Tower was announced in 2011, with the goal of surpassing the height of the Burj Khalifa, currently the tallest building in the world located in Dubai. The proposed height of the Jeddah Tower was 1,008 meters, almost 200 meters taller than the Burj Khalifa. The project was designed by Adrian Smith and Gordon Gill Architecture, the same firm that designed the Burj Khalifa. The construction of the tower was expected to take five years and cost approximately $1.5 billion. However, from the outset, the project was plagued with numerous challenges. One of the biggest hurdles was securing funding. The Jeddah Tower was initially financed by the Saudi Bin Laden Group. Yes, that is the family that has a member of Al-Qaeda, one of the largest construction companies in Saudi Arabia. However, in 2015, the company faced financial difficulties after a crane accident at the Grand Mosque in Mecca, which caused the deaths of over 100 people. This led to the company being banned from bidding on new projects, including the Jeddah Tower. As a result, the Jeddah Tower was left without a primary source of funding, and construction was put on hold for several years. In 2018, a new investment group led by the Public Investment Fund of Saudi Arabia took over the project. However, by this time, the tower's construction had already been delayed and costs had increased significantly. Additionally, the tower faced numerous technical challenges, such as the difficulty of building such a tall structure on unstable soil in a seismic zone. The tower's design also required the use of advanced technology and materials, which added to the complexity and cost of the project. Despite attempts to restart construction, the Jeddah Tower remained unfinished as of 2021. The project had been scaled down to a height of 1,008 meters, and the completion date had been pushed back several times. In February 2021, the project was put up for sale, indicating that the investment group had given up on it. And that's all from us today. If you enjoy the video, be sure to click on the subscribe icon below. Also, give us a like, share the video, and remember to turn on the notification bell for timely updates of our latest uploads. Until next time, thank you for watching.